What's happening guys? Mike Smith here with CalSpeed Karting, and this is your Super Series preview for round number 9. It has been nearly two months since the hype and excitement of the first Classical Grand Prix weekend and the 100th Super Series event, but the event photo captures just how big that event was. Andrew Wood would score the win over Charles Eichland and Miles Calvin, the trio coming to the stripe in a drag race that saw all three separated by just 166 thousandths at the line. But that was round number eight, and for this weekend's ninth round, we return to the season-long battle that started in January and could come to a close this weekend. In today's preview, we're going to be talking about the title fights predominantly, but we'll also sprinkle in some of the what-ifs for some of the hardware positions before capping things off to look at a very special award we'll once again be giving out the banquet, the Dennis Cambrell Integrity Award. Lots to cover in this penultimate round of the 2019 campaign, so let's get after it. First up, the driver everybody is chasing, and has been chasing nearly all year in the standings, Sean Fight. The math says that as long as he keeps a 97 plus point lead, he will clinch the 2019 Super Series title. He currently has a 116 point lead over P2 and 125 points over P3. No matter what happens, he'll still be the point leader at the end of the day. The question is, will we be calling him that, or will we be calling him champ? In almost the same way he improbably came from 10th to score a final hardware spot in last year's season finale, Patrick Britton's season has been met with challenges throughout, yet he still sits second after running two less events. Unfortunately, it seems his run may have come to an end this weekend, as it looks like he will miss his third event of the year, and because of that, slip down the order with no drops, no drops to fall back on. This would make last year's champ, Alyssa Yanni, the de facto number two coming into the weekend, and one closest to challenging fight for the title, and a chance to go back to back. There's a lot of distance to cover, however she did outscore him in this race last year by more than 50 points. She'll need another stellar round like she did in round number 7, as well as a bit of luck if things are going to go to the way of a championship for Alyssa Yanni this year. Chris Huerta's game is the same as Yanni's. Score max points and cross your fingers that things come back to you in the title hunt. At just eight points between himself and Yanni, we could see this duo also strike contemporary alliance on course, especially if it means hanging their fellow Machismo team out, out to dry a little bit. This weekend's A-Main will certainly be an interesting one to watch, with all these title implications up for grabs. But this is arguably the best year for Super Series veteran Jose De Silva, sitting inside the top five in points and already cinching up the Masters title. But the three-time Super Series winner has not picked up one in 2019, and for sure would like to snag another one before the year is out. He is not that far off the top two in front of him, so if there is a massive shift at the front, the Silva could be there to pick up the pieces. Going on to the Masters Championship, as I said, Jose De Silva is indeed the 2019 Super Series Masters Champ. This is his second Masters Championship, and becomes just the second driver in Super Series history to call themselves a multi-time Masters Champ joining Sergio Bravo. With the title sewn up, he can focus 100% on winning races and possibly snagging that overall hardware too. Diego Morales has a healthy lead over third in the Masters category, uh, and so second looks to be pretty solidly his if he just runs his normal course. Question is, how will he play a spoiler for the overall, and can he claim in more wins along the way? The 2018 Masters champ is having a great year, and he has missed just missed too many races, and that's why he's not in the, uh, the Masters hunt. Case in point, he's finished on the podium in three out of his five starts, including a win. Max DeMoss had a career run at the Classico GP, which sees him leapfrog into the hardware, but is just two points over Air Rubio in fourth, and 41 over longtime podium placeholder this year, Shang Wu in fifth. This is a three-way battle for the final hardware spot, and this weekend will be the stage setter, for the final battle in November. Going on to the Grand Masters Championship, back-to-back -back Grand Masters champ is, uh, is in a bit of a different position heading into the final couple of events, defense. Last two years, Tony Wyka has had to reel in the leader to, or make up points to claim the title, famously last year when he went from third in the standings to win in the finale. This time he is the leader, and the job isn't to get the position, but instead make sure he doesn't lose it. He has a small cushion, but as he proved last year, you can't rest on your laurels in this category. 
The ebb and flow of the Grand Masters class sees John Rice now within 92 points of the point lead in his first year of eligibility and against the driver he finished ahead of by one position last year. That margin was just 34 points, however. Both drivers have been in the running even better this year. He'll have to make some inroads this weekend to have a chance at the title, but he has done that two out of the last three events so far. Welcome to the podium, Tom. Now in the top three, he's just 23 points ahead of perennial, perennial hardware contender Jeff Latimer, however, and there's still all to play for in what is a very unpredictable class and will certainly go down to the finale here in the Grand Masters class. In the sportsman category, Spencer Russell has been the de facto number one for most of the year, putting a stamp on things with his podium in round number four. Last month didn't go the way he wanted at the Classical Grand Prix, so it will be interesting to see how our young point leader uh, does in the rebound this weekend. He has a healthy point lead, so just staying smart could be even enough to clinch it one round early this weekend. Evan Karp kicked off the year as a sportsman driver to beat, but things got a bit tougher as spring changed in the summer. He missed round number seven, and then last month had his toughest showing yet, and could really use a reset button this weekend. The speed is there, and if things go his way, he may be able to reel in the title a bit, but he'll need a career day to have any chance. The, the newly crowned 2019 Sprint Series champ moved into hardware after Classical GP and has actually closed in the striking distance for second spot in the standings. Tyler Redman has proven to be one of the up-and-coming talents at Cal Speed, and it will be interesting to see how he ices this 2019 cake. Of course, like I said, our wild card, excuse me, our uh, storyline, our big spotlight, it is the Integrity Award, the Dennis Cambrell Integrity Award. We've been talking about the championship fights and hardware contenders all preview, but there is one award that cannot be won, and is instead earned. The Dennis Cambrell Integrity Award is a peer-nominated honor, which is given to a full-time Super Series driver that shows sportsmanship both on and off the track. They embody what the sport in our series is all about, and it's given at the banquet every year. This weekend is the last chance to start thinking about who you want to nominate. We already have several names on the list. Make sure you let us know who you think should be the 2019 recipient. So that's the preview for round number nine of the 2019 Cal Speed Super Series. I appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll see you at the track.